an elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? That maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover-ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Richard, shut up. Hey, all you cutie cats and kittens. Tally's here, guys. You guys remember Tally? Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's a room full of... That was so creepy. I'm never doing that again. <clears throat> I'm hard. Keep going. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> Me too, yeah. <laughs> I heard you guys are investigating crimes for the unethical crew. Is that correct? That's what we're doing. Yep. Awesome. I, ha- I think I have a good one for you. Okay. What do you, what do you want? What do you want us to get, get ahead of here? Do you guys remember like a year ago when no one had anything to do and they just had to like watch TV all the time? Yes. Yeah. So there was like a huge topic about this guy. His name is Don Lewis. Yeah, I'm aware of the you Don remember Lewis. Him? I do for sure. I don't know. Do you guys remember? I for sure yeah. do. Don't worry. Well, you know, I haven't heard anything about him since, you know, March of 2020. So I was wondering if you guys could find out what actually happened to him. You know what, Tali? For you, I got your back, buddy. Like a bra strap? I got I got your back like a bra strap. I like it that one. I'm going to start saying that at work and people are going to be like, you are wrong. I can't wait for you to get me to. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a very male dominated industry. Um, not that it should be. Some There's guys no reason why. should have bras. I, I agree. Man boobs are a thing, man. Yeah, you're being transphobic, Richard. Men can have tits. <laughs> Thanks getting... for looking out for us, RJ. You're welcome. You and your big, <laughs> luscious titties. <laughs> All right. Well, Tally, let's. I gotta solve this. I don't know if. Uh, okay. So, Jack Donald Lewis, who drops the Jack for some reason and goes by Don Lewis, was born on April 30th, 1938, in Dade City, Florida. His mother was. Uh, his mother was a single mom who worked as a seamstress, and she also sold bread. That is what how they described her. She sold bread. <laughs> they didn't say she's a baker. Okay. Yeah, exactly. She just sold bread. That's uh... a lady on the side of the road with a bag <laughs> that just says bread on it. Now, is that like her own business or did someone else provide her with the bread? I don't know. They didn't give much information on her, but what I do yeah, know is she, she was incorporated. It's Don's Mom's Bread Inc. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fucking detective? Come on. This is important. I should have went down the bread rabbit hole. I'm sorry. And I, God damn it. Okay. So in high school, Don had a bunch of jobs and it was said that the girls loved him. Uh, even at an early age, he was not only hardworking and handsome, but he was smart too. finishing high school a year early in 1955. So he met his first wife when he was 15, working as a bag boy at the local a and uh, Gladys Cross was checking out with her mom when he waked at her. And I'm assuming it's her mom because she was 13. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Uh, they went on their oh. first date not long after that. Fateful wink. Less than two years later, they were married. So at 17 and 14, respectively. Less than a year after that, they had their first daughter. So, yeah, she was 15 having her first kid. Good for her. Damn. Yeah. So, Don was 18, so they were very poor after their first child, but then Don was determined to make something out of it. No shit, they were children with a child. It's nuts. Uh, Today, in this day and age, it would, like, that was kind of normal back then, I guess, a little bit more normal, because I know my grandparents had kids very young. They had lots of kids, too. Like, they were 11? Yeah. So, just to be clear, his mom wasn't sharing the wealth of the bread, then? That was my concern, too. I was wondering why she didn't pass down the bread company to her son she's got him working as a fucking bag boy <laughs> you got to work your way up to bread man you can't be a bread man right away you bag bread and then you become the bread man okay <laughs> uh, uh, you know what <laughs> don lewis's mom would hate the world we live in gluten-free everything she oh, would yeah. get nowhere <laughs> i'm assuming she's dead maybe that's fucked up i don't know Oh, no, she's dead. Don Lewis today would have been 82 years old or 84 or something like that. Like, she's long gone. He's still alive. <laughs> but his mom was was nine when she had him. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they share a room at the nursing home. 
So they're very, uh, they very poor after the first child, but then uh, Don was determined to make something of himself and he started a hauling business. Uh, from there, he saved up a bunch of money and bought five dump trucks and then he hauled some more. He bought used cars at auction and started to sell them off. He would even buy broken washing machines, fix them and sell them at a profit. So Don had a mind for mechanics. All right. So he started by making money that way, hauling rocks, selling shit. <laughs> Damn. His next big move was into real estate. Uh, in this, he had been called ruthless. He would buy up bad mortgages, tell the homeowners that they could stay if they paid him 18% interest. If they made the first six payments, then he would sell back oh. their house uh, back to them at a cheap. So fuck that. That guy fucking sucks. Yeah. He was preying on desperate people, but that's America. What? A piece of shit. I kind of want to kill him and make him disappear. <laughs> RJ, are you buying a new house right now? <laughs> <laughs> what a bastard person. If Don Lewis today came up to you and said, I'll buy your house off of you, help your mortgage, but you just have to pay me 18% interest, would you kill him? Like, would you legit kill him? I would gouge his eyes out on my front steps. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have a 3% interest rate. It's crazy. They're his front steps uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah back in the day though i think interest rates were way higher uh but houses costed a lot less like i'm pretty sure my parents said when they bought their house it was like a 22 percent interest rate or something r- ridiculous like holy fuck yeah but they also bought their house for like twenty thousand dollars so and then it took them 25 years to pay it off because it was outrageous fucking canada jesus yeah. christ so anyways but my <sighs> i live in the middle of nowhere so houses are different it's a different game up here anyway that's fair yeah so he eventually amassed nearly 350 parcels in five florida counties uh all in different names and under different companies he didn't want people to know he had a lot of money uh is how his lawyer joseph fritz puts it in an interview so by 1981 he was a self-made millionaire Okay, I'm just always curious. I always hear millionaire. How many millions? Is it, he's like a two millionaire? Because I'm not as impressed. He, it's one million. He had one million plus dollars. A millionaire just means you have to have one million dollars. <laughs> that's it? I you just have how, to get to the million? Yes, that's what a millionaire means. You made a million dollars. What do you think it means? Yeah, but but I, I'm with Rick. That's, that's some Thank bullshit. You. That's like a technicality. <laughs> Listen, the American dream says if you made it, you have to have at least two million and up. Like, that's the... The threshold but i want to know like it th- he have like nine million because then i'm impressed but is it like 1.9 million i'm like eh, you could have done better you know get that fucking yeah. bread like your mom used to say <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Hell yeah. laughs> by by 81 he had a million dollars later on he earned a lot more don't worry about that he gets he gets he makes a shit ton more money so uh in 1981 that's when he was a self-made millionaire uh that was the same year he met carol murdoch she was 20 and he was 41. God damn with this man. I know he, he loves the, he loves the ladies. Uh, yeah, but he loves them like excessively younger. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Half less, more than half your age is gross too. I don't care how old you are. If you're 70 and you're dating a 34 year old, fuck you. I don't care. It's gross. It's weird. Wait, are we victim blaming? Is it, are we, is this where this starts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's the victim? I am- so we're behind the Patreon wall, then we're good to go. Yeah, we can say whatever we want. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, can I can I say he was probably strolling around through the through the newborn nursery looking to smash? You can say whatever you when want. When he was five, when he- <laughs> that seems to be the age gap that he was comfortable with. Just an exponential. Just you know this- what was it? Fifteen and thirteen, and then forty and twenty. So clearly. You know, you just go closer and closer together. Toddler so and infant. Toddler. toddler and yeah, infant. cruising around looking for. How many car seats can you get in a dump truck? I mean, I feel like Don <laughs> would know that. <laughs> hey, baby girl, you want a bottle? Anyways. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> the specificity. So uh, they met after Carol was crying and walking barefoot down uh, the street in Tampa after a fight with her hus- her then husband. Don stopped and asked if she wanted a ride and she refused. He swung around and offered her a ride again. And then she refused again. And then again, for the third time, uh, this is where she noticed that he had a gun in the front seat. Don told Carol, if it made her feel safe, she could hold the gun to him. He just needed someone to talk to. True love, baby. So is that a psychopath or a a sociopath? I think that's sociopath, right? 
Which one? He's definitely like he knows he has full control <laughs> over the situation, but he's like, yeah, I'll give this girl a gun. He, she's not gonna shoot me. No, that's actually not a, a sociopath or a psychopath, dum dum. That's a narcissist. God, man, you're so smart, Richard. You fucking got me. <laughs> I love how you just always know exactly the right thing. I, I, it's, you know, it, sometimes I don't even think it out. So it just, I hear a voice in my head and I just say it. <laughs> so Carol agreed and she did just that. She took the gun and she pointed at him. She, uh, she claims that she pointed the gun on him and they drove around and they hit it off pretty hard that evening. Uh, but this story is all from her. No one else can corroborate. Uh, so no one knows how long or even if she held the gun to him at all. Uh, but it's kind of a fun story, I guess. You know, it's kind of like a how I met your dad story. Like I held a gun on him for a couple hours. I, I don't no, know. No, it a hundred percent is not. That is not, nobody. Could you, could you imagine like he tells a really funny joke. She accidentally pulls the trigger because she's laughing. And then you have to explain. <laughs> like, I just feel like it'd be, it, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a really cool pickup line for like the first 30 seconds. And I'm like, oh shit, this, I actually just gave this girl a gun. And here we are driving around and we're like 10 minutes into it. And she's still pointing this fucking gun at me. What's going to happen? Yeah. Um, you know they fucked in that car too. Yes. It, it was a truck. When he said hold a gun, maybe he meant his dick. <laughs> what she's holding? She's holding the gun to his dick. <laughs> Listen here. Uh so she was looking for a way out of her marriage, obviously, and she found it in Don. Holding a gun to him is weird, but offering someone to let you hold a gun to him is weird too. Uh so they're both fucking weird in this, if you ask me. Wait, how old was she when they met? She was 20 and he was 41. And when did she first get married? She was, uh, see, I didn't go back into her because we're talking about Dawn, but she, mm. I can tell you, she was like married when she was like 16, I think it was to, uh, I forget the guy's name, something Murdoch. But he was abusive and he, uh, according to her, he was abusive, you know, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So little and Carol know Dawn had other affairs. Uh, it was rumored that Dawn had 23 mistresses, including Carol. 23 is very specific, yet I can't find much else on these girlfriends. I can confirm that he had at least one in Costa Rica where he frequented on business trips. So that's the only other one I can really confirm that he had uh, is that one. But the, his wife later said 23, which is crazy. That fucking rocks. That's so much energy. I know. Listen to this. He had so many affairs. That Gladys used to pack him bigger lunches because she knew it was for his girlfriends. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not even joking. If that's not if that's not the definition of big dick energy, I don't know. Yo, he got his wife to pack his girlfriend's lunches. Yeah. <laughs> she would just she would pack him a big lunch, but she'd said later on it's because she knew she was and she felt bad for these girls. So she would just like I don't know. That's fucking awesome. Talk about a wife though, right? Yo, Don had the best life. I hate him, but he, what a... I like how the wife felt bad for the females because it was like, I know you're putting up with his shit. I'm not. You are. Here's here's some some chips. Enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> some fucking baloney. <laughs> uh, Don was a playboy, and Anne McQueen, his secretary of 18 years, said that she was probably the only girl that he didn't fool around with. She also said, and I quote on this one, I used to say it's the only time in my life I was glad I was short and fat. So... <laughs> All right, Anne. Roasting him, I love it. And herself. That that tells me that they did have an affair because that was just her trying to dig herself. No way. <laughs> uh -uh. I don't believe that for a second. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Don was uh, notorious for fucking shit. So yeah, he was probably fucking the copier at the office. Yeah, could, could... But also probably because he thought it was Anne. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the day after Don and Carol met, she became his mistress. Uh, and in a long line of Donnie's mistresses, Mistress I, Miss, I don't know how to say Mistress. No, that, that second one was right. Mistress I, okay. Yep. Uh, his secretiveness wasn't only in his finances. For the first three years that Carol and Don were dating, he used a different name, Bob Martin. He told Carol he worked for a crazy guy named Don Lewis. And anytime they saw each other, Bob would whisk her away somewhere secluded so his crazy boss, Don Lewis, wouldn't catch them. Uh, Carol later found out that he was Don Lewis and they were just hiding from his wife. So three years calling himself someone else just so he could smash. Listen, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not an expert in affairs, but why didn't he just say his boss was Bob Martin and that he was hiding from his boss, Bob, and then give her his real name? 
<laughs> I don't get it either. I think he didn't want her to think that he was a rich person. Uh, you know what I mean? Because uh, uh, his business would probably be under his name. You could figure stuff out if you have someone's name. Not as easily as now, but you still- Didn't he just say he bought right? every single house he ever owned under a different name to hide his money? Not all different names. Like in, under different names and companies. So like 20 of them would be under Don Lewis. 50 of them would be under this other Don Martin or whatever the fuck. So we would have like, yes, giant parcels, but not his full package wouldn't be under only his name. He had like maybe six or seven different companies and four or five different names. So 350 parcels split between that would be still a lot of parcels for one person. You know what I mean? Like it's still a lot of property to own. Mm. During the next few years, Don's wealth grew immensely, Kara helping him with the nuts and bolts of the operation. So she would take over a lot of the accounting, a lot of the purchasing, a lot of the uh, Don liked to buy like scrap and stuff like that still, even though he was a millionaire to like fix up and stuff. And she put an end to that. So she was actually very helpful to his business. Uh, but despite that wealth, Don was kind of two-faced when it came to his money. On one hand, Don was a trained non-licensed pilot. So he would go out on a, uh, on a whim and just buy a plane with the cash he carried on him. He would carry plane money on him. That's nuts. Like that's $10,000, $20,000 just in his pocket. Okay. Uh, where would he go? Way, but sorry, like, where would he go to get this plane? Like, how far is that? Anywhere. He would go. This guy here is a rich guy. He would go to like private uh, airfields and just be like, I like that plane. Can I buy it? And they'd be like, sure. And he'd go and buy it with money in his pocket. Like, it's nuts. Yeah. Travel is of no consequence to people with money, uh, is what I'm learning. My boss is like loaded and uh, he'll just come back in on like a Monday and be like, oh, yeah, I was in LA for like two days but okay i will yeah. say if you go for, on a i i don't do this but if you, i was listening to some podcast and they're talking about it if you want a private flight it's actually like really fucking cheap like if it's just like hmm. like a simple like you and a couple people it depends how rich you are rick though what's the definition of cheap to you I don't, you know what i don't actually remember how much they said they said yeah, it was exactly. on the podcast fucking, i swear i i wish i had a number for you fed. but no 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 it was two random guys on a podcast i do a podcast on the street I, I, yeah. it's called podcast, but outside. And they were just two random dudes and they were like, Oh, that's actually not bad at all. So, you know, it wasn't just me. <laughs> it all, it's all relative though. Like a, a, a bus ticket from here to Tallahassee would be uh, cheap to a fucking millionaire, but like a little fucking poor kid on the street be like, I'm going to Tallahassee one day. I just got to save up my nickels. Got to sell more bread. Maybe I'll make it to Tallahassee. All right, hold on. That's a terrible analogy because there's no way a bus trip to Tallahassee from anywhere <laughs> exceeds two hundred dollars. Is that cheap to you? I, I mean, like it's affordable. I'm not yeah. saying it's cheap, but if I could, if I could travel for the weekend anywhere in the the country, and now and our country's a little bit bigger than yours, <clears throat> then Canada. Are you retarded? I, a big. I mean, bigger than the places where you want to go. Uh, okay, Canada's the second biggest country in the world, but continue. Is it really? Yes, Russia's the biggest, Canada's the second biggest. Good try, though. Is that real? You're the second biggest country in the world? How could you be this arrogant and cocky? Yeah, but they're, they're cheating. It's just land mass they don't live on. Yeah, well, that's true, too. There's a lot of ice sheet. Is that real? I've got to look that up. I, I'll wait. Yo, you're about to blow my fucking mind. It is only by land mass, though. But how much of your land do you not live on? We don't live on most of it. We only have 36 million people in Canada, so there's way less, there's way more land and way less people. Oh, so you're trying to tell me, you're trying to tell me that the yeah. reason you don't live on it is because you don't have enough people, not because it's like frozen tundra and no one wants to live there? No one wants to live there, but no one wants to live in Nevada Man, either. But how the fuck do you guys stay out of like everyone else's business with that much land? I feel like you guys would be all up in it. Like people would be like fighting you and shit. Yeah, we're nice though. All right. Yeah. Just to be clear, from uh, Syracuse to Tallahassee, it's one hundred and sixty nine dollars. Is that is that a plane ticket or a bus ticket? That's a that's a fucking bus ticket. Yes, that's expensive for a goddamn <laughs> Greyhound. I would never pay that much to set foot on a Greyhound bus. OK, and I'm pretty sure it takes literally two and a half days. Have you ever been to like the frozen north part of Canada? The farthest I've been is a little place called Moosonee. How much is a plane ticket from like where you live to Moosonee? You got you got to take a moose. Okay, how much is a train ticket? Uh, from where I live, it would probably be about two hundred fifty bucks. All right, if we ever get really famous, I'm flying up to wherever you live, and we're taking a, a, a train to whatever the fuck you just. Oh, said. Oh, we can go that... to Moosonee for sure. There's a place called Moose Factory that's a little bit more north. We can go right there. It'll be awesome. You have me at Moose. You have me at Moose. 
Yeah, it's cool. If you ever come visit, for sure, we'll go up to Moose City. I, I live right beside the town that has the train that goes there. You have to get to the town, which is Cochrane, and then take the train to there. That's only, like, literally no highway, nothing. Just it's, train. That blows my fucking mind. I did not know you guys were the second largest landmass. I would have never guessed that. Is the train pulled by a moose? I wish. That'd be awesome. Yeah, just like. Yeah, we have 17% of the drinkable water too. Anyways, uh, let's move out. Let's move on to the next part here. So just as a side note with the uh, the pilot stuff, his license was suspended in 1988 when he hit some wires while landing his plane during a storm. So uh, I'm not saying he's a good pilot, but he was a pilot and he liked planes. Hell yeah. So that was talking about his like having a bunch of money, but despite his wealth, uh, he would also wear clothes from uh, thrift shops and garage sales. So he wasn't like he was thrifty as well. Like he would still hustle as if he had no money. That's what people described him as. He was a guy, even though he was rich, he still had that grind. No, nah, he, he just had like that eighties business guy, Trump theory where, you know, like you, you, you do like these weird power tactics in, to, in business. So you do shit like dress down or whatever, so that people make assumptions about you that aren't actually true. And then that's how you get them out of their house and they owe you money, apparently. That's why Trump dressed up because people would think he was smart. Oh, it's, well, I, well, I mean, it. it's like what a bunch of um, what's his fucking face? The Boris Johnson guy from the UK. Yeah. How he like intentionally musses his hair or whatever. Does he do that on purpose? Because he does look like an insane person. It's like uh, like you sure. can find lectures from him where he's like the most eloquent and like intelligent dude. But then, like, he's basically, like, trumps it up when he's when he's doing, like, political. Huh. It's it's it makes yeah. sense. Like, it's not a I don't I don't I'm not, like, shocked by it, but I never would have thought, like, obviously, sure. Why wouldn't people do that? But underestimate yourself. It's part of, like, I'm sure it's in uh, what's that fucking art of war. I'm sure it's in that book. I've read it a couple of like, I'm sure make people underestimate you is yeah, part of it's the like it's you like some I mean? dumb rich guy thing he probably did to just wear thrifty store clothes yeah. because you didn't like, there's no way that was his taste when he's crashing planes into fucking wires and then buying another plane. I don't know, Rich. I, yeah. But look <laughs> at like Mark Zuckerberg. That dude only wears like a t-shirt and jeans and he's loaded. And plenty and plenty, plenty of sunblock. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, he, but he's like, he's trying to be Mr. Cool guy. Like he put a video on the other day with him playing beat saber. Like this is my job. Like shut the fuck up, man. Your job is to sit around and, to destroy the world yeah exactly like come on you don't play beat saber all day shut the fuck up there's people who actually do do that sweet baby yeah. rays all right so in 1990 after 34 years of marriage four children and after countless oversized lunches <laughs> gladys asked for a divorce <laughs> i can't i can't deal with any more of this whore baloney <laughs> whore baloney yeah. yeah baloney for the horse i got gotcha. you uh that was also a secretive affair he didn't really announce that to anyone that they got divorced they did it in like a uh, quiet ceremony he she got her payout and she wasn't supposed to say anything so he was very secretive all around this guy okay regardless of that carol murdoch became carol lewis when they got married in 1991 after a 10-year affair in the ultimate cheap move as a wedding ring don gave carol a 14 dollars ring during the courthouse ceremony. So he didn't even go all out with the wedding. He said, fuck you, here's a ring from the- Fucking awesome. <laughs> like, again, I hate this dude, but like that shit rocks. I love that. Shotgun wedding with a $14 Cracker Jack ring. I like it. This is how much I love you. Yeah. But that it made me think, Gladys knew about this affair for seven years, right? Just them two, because it was only the first three years they were hiding the- uh the, he was calling himself whatever his fucking alias was when they're hiding because she caught him right so that just seems exhausting like how the fuck do people have one affair never mind like 23 i i couldn't imagine i got a wife i couldn't do it even if i wanted to which i don't i couldn't have an affair fuck there's so many secrets it's too crazy generally you can keep up with about like 27 at one time after 27 that's where it starts getting crazy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah wow I feel like you've only talked to 27 girls in your life, Getsy. <laughs> Who said anything about affairs with women? Dude, don't be fucking disgusting. It's 2021. I Okay, I know you've talked about 27 dogs. <laughs> uh, one more thing about his affairs, because I find this fun. Uh, Gladys said he would date girls younger than our daughters. That's a quote, uh, which uh, she said she couldn't compete with. So that's why they got a divorce. So uh, 
I bet you she was just relieved to, to get a divorce. You know what I mean? 34 years of marriage they were fucking married for. She took his life, man. His whole life. It's long. So soon after Don and Carol became the Lewises, they bought their first big cat. Uh, this is why I start to see why Don is a playboy. That's such a fucking big dick move. You know, it's equivalent of a girl going like, I like chocolate and then buying her a fucking chocolate factory. That's fucking bonkers. Oh, yeah. It makes up for the $14 fucking ring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but then I found out that Don always loved big and exotic animals. Uh, one of his daughters said that one time she came home from school and there was an alligator in the bathtub. So maybe not such a playboy move, more of like a selfish, I like big animals already. Move. Okay, but to play devil's advocate, I don't think he really liked the animals. I think that alligator was there because there's probably drugs inside of it because this dude always just buying shit with cash. Sounds like drug smuggling. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the theories that comes up for sure. Uh, so it was six months. Uh, it was a six month old Bobcat and they named it Murdoch, which was Carol's old last name. So I kind of find that funny. Wait, that was her husband's last name though. Yeah. Her old the last. Yeah, exactly. Her original husband's last name. She named the fucking Bobcat Murdoch, which is awesome. <laughs> That's so bizarre. But maybe there's like an explanation for it. Maybe the Bobcat had like a lazy eye and it reminded her of her husband. And, yeah. you know? <laughs> or maybe it beat her. Yeah. <laughs> It scratched her in the face first day. Oh, just like Murdoch used to do. It called her a cunt and kicked her out in her pajamas. <laughs> uh, Shit, too real. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, they were, uh, they fell in love with that cat, or Carol did for sure. And they just started buying more and more. Then they started to see what problems big cats were having uh, in captivity in the U.S., Many people were just breeding them to sell for uh, sell or for pelts, which I didn't know people would mm. sell them just to kill them and have them for pelts. Uh, Don, so after that, I guess under Carol's instruction, Don kept going around the U.S. exotic pet auctions and buying every troubled animal he could find. In 1992, they started Wildlife on Easy Street, growing it to over 200 big cats uh, of 17 different species. It had five full-time employees, over 100 volunteers, and offset costs. They offered cabins at Wildlife on Easy Street for $75 a night. Wildlife on Easy Street was just like a big zoo-type area. It was just a big mat land mass they bought so they could keep buying more and more animals. And then eventually they turned it into like a hotel uh, with animals. And when you stayed there, you could have trained cougars or other big cats spend the night with you in your room. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's exactly what I fucking want. Yeah. I'm going to go to bed now. Don't fucking eat me. Yeah. So they boasted that at the same price, you could stay at a Holiday Inn. So it was a, it was a steal of a deal. You got an exotic cat plus the price of a uh, Holiday Inn. I love it. I mean, who says that I'm not getting exotic cats at the fucking Holiday Inn? That's... I was going to say, I've stayed in some pretty ratty Holiday Inns. And... Yeah, I've been there. Exotic rodents at least. Yeah. Okay, the... the detective mind coming out was this a non-profit they, they it's it's a i believe not for profit. formalized as a 501c3 a not not a non-profit a not for profit yeah same thing no they're not non-profits require you to give away all profits uh, to whatever you're doing it has to be used up a not for profit you still can earn profit but that's not your goal okay yeah, so it was a nonprofit, but the Lewises had their share of troubles. In 94, they were cited for buying leopards without the proper license. The government took the leopards, and Don threw a bunch of lawsuits at them for doing that. Uh, 94 is also the year Gladys sued Don for hiding money from him in the divorce. Uh, this move, according to Carol, prompted Don to take Gladys and the kids out of the will. They eventually settled, and Don gave Gladys nearly $200,000, so he hid a bunch from her. And she found out. Wow. Wildlife on Easy Street was also cited when a cougar escaped the pen in 1996. So they had enough animals escaping and some scary shit happen. Uh, Carol sounds like she genuinely wanted to help the animals during this time. Uh, this is a point of contention during Don and her's relationship. Don wanted to sell the cat saying everything has a price. Don had always had questionable business tactics and animals weren't what he really loved. He loved money and pussy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah there there is a big cat pussy hacky thing in there and I, I i couldn't find it so go on uh i was just gonna say it just happens that uh big cats will get you big carol pussy so big carol pussy <laughs> that's that's how he proposed uh, carol will you and your big pussy marry me 
<laughs> Here's this fourteen dollar ring <laughs> and a fucking bobcat. I'll buy, I'll buy you a big pussy if you give me some of that big pussy. Uh, Don, who was 59 at the time, went missing August 18th, 1997, after visiting his lawyer early that same morning. His 1989 Dodge van was found 64 kilometers away in a private airport parking lot two days after his disappearance was notified to the police. The keys were inside the van on the floorboard. No trace has ever been found of him. No signs of foul play. No credit card activity. Don's kids from his first marriage says that he was planning on leaving Carol. Two months before he vanished, Lewis had filed court documents seeking domestic violence claims against Carol. He said that she tried to shoot him. All right. Since the judge failed to uh, find any grounds for an injunction, Don went back to live with Carol. So he couldn't have been that threatened. Like he couldn't have been that scared if he went back to live with her. Uh, sounds like he was making a case to leave, in my opinion. Uh, she claims that there wasn't a problem with abuse. She wasn't trying to abuse him at all. Uh, what happened was she got rid of a bunch of junk he had piled in the yard when he was on one of his many trips to Costa Rica. And he came back and he was furious and filed an injunction against her. So he's like, my, my, my used cars and my fucking broken down washing machines are gone. What the fuck are you doing, Carol? And she's like, oh, it was just taking up room for more cats. Fuck you and your cats. I'm going to court. All, right, all I'm saying is this kind of sounds like the same start as what Tally did with her husband selling all of his cars. So there's a potential <laughs> chance here that he winds up dead, possibly in Costa Rica. Yeah, if James just disappears one day, James, we're watching for you. Private dicks will be on that case, buddy. I promise that. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so where was I here? uh okay don's disappearance embroiled carol in a legal battle with don's kids and ex-wife over who would control don's estimated five million dollar business holdings they claimed she forged his will uh and then in 1997 after lengthy legal battle a judge ordered a conservatorship partnered with carol to watch over the five million dollars in real estate the conservatorship uh could have ended after don was either found or declared dead and you had to wait five years to declare someone dead. You have to wait five years someone disappeared before you're allowed to do that. So Carol declared Don dead in 2002 on the anniversary of the five years, like exactly the day of. Uh, okay, but if I waited five years, I would have too. Yeah, but yeah. she also she also said she did it uh, so quickly because she wanted money to keep wildlife on easy street open. It was losing money every year. Uh, it was running a deficit of like 100K a year or something like that. So mm -hmm. she just didn't have the, the capital to keep it up. And Don would have just kept writing her checks, right? So she didn't have Don doing that. And the conservatorship had, I think the conservatorship ended up putting away just enough money to keep it going from what the deficit were uh, was, sorry. And that's all she pretty much bargained for with the lawyers and stuff that were in control of the conservatorship. Uh, after that, she just got rid of him. She just said he was dead, right? So that is the story of Don Lewis. And I, I'll go through, I've got a bunch of theories again, guys. So theory number one, Don ran away to Costa Rica to start a new life because he realized he was married to that bitch, Carol Baskins. That's right. Carol Lewis, if you guys already guessed, was Carol Baskins. She married Harold Baskins after... Uh, she declared him dead, so uh, she became Carol Baskins, and we all remember Carol Baskins. Yeah, yeah, quick side note. Um, I, I know it's been a while, but um, we all agree that that man dresses up like a cat and eats her pussy, right? The new guy? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I that just what that screamed to me when I'd seen it. For sure. And I, I write, why not run away from that? She seems terrifying in the Tiger King documentary. Imagine being married to that. That Harold guy uh, must have a lot of patience. No, I think he's just a submissive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She makes him wear like a like a sandpaper sleeve for his tongue. <laughs> yeah. Go to town. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Uh, I, I do know that Don loved her for a while because uh, she did brag they had sex for two or three times every day. Uh, but is that worth it? She probably had leopard print pubes. First time cute, but always, you know what I mean? Always you want to see leopard print down there? I don't know. Did you just say that the first time you saw leopard print pubes, you thought it was cute? No, I... <laughs> yeah, well, I think you were saying, you know, one time is... Yeah, right? one time. One time would be like, oh, cute. But like every time she has a new like animal print pubic area, gross. Uh, he was already going to Costa Rica for business trips all the time. 
and had somewhat of a life down there. He owned property. Uh, he'd actually bought 200 acres there to eventually move wildlife on easy street to Costa Rica. Uh, and if she's pulling guns on him, uh, why not just take a bunch of cash and live on a secluded Island? That seems like a good option to me. Uh, and after he did go missing, Carol actually hired a private detective to go down to Costa Rica to look for him. And also investigators from the U S uh, have all the U S government have also gone down to look, they couldn't find him. All the investigators from the U.S. found, though, uh, they found some shady business dealings, obviously, and some even shadier pussy that he was smashing. Shadier? Yeah, shadier. Sh- like, gross young girls. Oh, 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 okay. I thought you just meant the individual the pussies belonged to were like, sound like they were like a crime kingpin or something. <laughs> Not- How the hell do you even buy 200 acres in Costa Rica? I feel like it's like mostly national park. Yeah, when you're rich, you could probably buy anything. Everything has a price. Remember Don said that. Everything has a price. I'm sure he spent shit tons on it. Yeah, what is Costa Rica its own country or is that like belong to It is its own country, yeah. It is one of it is one of 36 countries that doesn't have a military. Oh, well, that's yeah. how he got it then. He just said this is mine. Yeah. I, there was, he, he staged a coup in a war and he won it. Yeah. There's no one to fight him. Uh, so they even checked on his property, no Don, but also two missing ocelots that Don had stored there. The ocelots were shipped somewhere. They knew that, but they couldn't find out where because of the shitty postal service there. But they knew that they were picked up, delivered to the fucking airport and shipped somewhere. So someone actually got rid of his ocelots, which is weird. Uh, there were indicators that he'd been funneling money slowly to Costa Rica. And it was also, there was also indications he was bringing clothes to a family because a lot of people think he had an, another family down there. He was bringing like kids clothes and stuff like that down there. So he might've had another kid. Yeah. And yeah. after he got divorced, they probably stopped getting to eat lunch. So yeah, exactly. he needed to <laughs> provide for them. <laughs> uh, so it could be a new family, new life. Uh, but who, who the fuck leaves like $5 million in assets behind? How much money would you have had to have hidden for that to be okay, right? Uh, th- all this guy loved was money and poon, right? That's all he loved. So it seems weird to me to leave that much money on the table, but who knows? Did he did he speak Spanish? Do we know? I'm going to... I'm going to go with, I didn't look into it, but I'm going to go with maybe probably because he was, do, he was down there like once every other month for like weeks at a time. So it's not like he wasn't there all the time. He, he he strikes this me, guy was a fucking drug smuggler. He strikes me as the type of guy though, who would like say he speaks Spanish, but like doesn't actually. So, Uno cerveza, por favor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could uh, be. You know, que paso, que pasa. But it depends, and, you know. <laughs> All right, so then there's the the next one, which gets into what you're talking about here, Getsy. So theory number two, uh, he was thrown out of a plane over the Gulf of Mexico. All right, so this theory implies a criminal element, uh, which isn't hard to believe. Don used fake names and companies all the time. He was also known to bury money on his property. When Gladys was asked why he didn't just put the money in the bank, she said he already had a lot of money in the bank, so why do that? <laughs> that was her answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lewis's lawyer, Joseph Fritz, I mentioned him a little earlier, thinks Lewis was pushed out of a plane. He thinks Don was lured to an airport under the guise of buying an airplane, then murdered and thrown out of the plane mid-flight over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I guess, could be, I said earlier, Don would carry enough cash at all times to buy a plane, so maybe someone just saw his wallet, you know? Uh, There's also other theories, uh, mostly from Reddit, that he was smuggling drugs over the border, and that's how he amassed so much money. Uh, on his last run, the drug dealers threw him out of the plane. So just another mm-hmm. variant of what the lawyer said, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but opening a pressurized uh, cabin midair is a lot of work. Uh, killing someone in a little passenger plane isn't easy either. Uh, so you'd have to, like, surprise them, open up a fucking door in the middle of the sky where it's, and then chuck them out. Seems unlikely, you know? Seems highly unlikely. Mm. unlikely and the, the problem the, the the other thing is is the plane went missing or the plane didn't go missing either so someone would have had to drop him off because he was at the airport right so did they kill him and just drop him somewhere in the states maybe and then just park the truck there it could be that too but we're mm. we're getting there so drop that was the theory that's a popular theory he's thrown over on the gulf of mexico okay sure why not theory number three Kenny Farr killed Don Lewis. Uh, Now, Kenny Farr worked for Don. 
He was a handyman, kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, he continued to work for Carol after the disappearance of Don. Uh, Carol said he was the only guy that she trusted to go with Don to buy big cats because he would make sure he didn't get lost on the way or get killed by a cat. So he was the responsible driver, basically, you know, of uh, Mr. Lewis here. Carol also says she loves Farr like a son. So she doesn't believe it at all that Kenny Farr mm -hmm. did it. But in September 2020, uh, CBS 48 Hours, the show 48 Hours, did an episode on the disappearance of Dawn. Uh, Farr's ex-wife, Trish, says that her former husband admitted to killing Lewis. All right. She said that he had all sorts of guns and Don's van the night before Don's disappearance. So many guns, Far needed Trish to come help her bring them in or help him bring help him bring in the fucking guns. Uh, so mm -hmm. he had that many guns where it was like loads of guns. And then she noticed it was Don's van. And then when she asked about Don and why he was helping bring all the guns, Far told her Don's gone and not to ask him about him again. All right. Interesting. I also, though, don't feel like the number of, like, a number of guns, depending on how many, can be suspicious, but I don't think it, like, further enforces that you've murdered someone the more guns you have. Okay, but he also, wait, if that's a direct quote, if all he said was, Don's gone, that doesn't mean that he killed Don. That just means he is aware oh, that Don more. is gone. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely more. Uh, sorry. Okay. But I'll, I'll touch on what you said about the guns. All the guns were Don's gun. All right. That's what she says anyway. And they were all piled in the back of Don's van and Don was nowhere to be found. And they're loading them into his basement. It's just weird. So that would happen, especially, okay. So up in New York, and I don't know how it is in Canada, but the gun laws are so insanely strict up here that you need to have it. Like you, you need to have like so many guns registered. You can only own so many of like one type, all that stuff. So if people have guns just like as heirlooms they when they die families will go to the house and just like gather all of the guns because the state will seize them and if don was just leaving and if he potentially trusted this guy he could have just told him to take all sort of like having someone delete your hard drive yes yeah. but this is florida <laughs> i love that fucking analogy <laughs> well you know we all have things not I'm not going to say what. Fisting porn. It's all good. Yes. <laughs> yes. My mom wouldn't appreciate it, but yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she said the same time of the disappearance, a couple days later, a padlocked freezer showed up on their uh, porch, then vanished soon after. She even went as far as to say that Far threatened to put her in the meat grinder, like, and I quote, I did Don. So uh, maybe the gun thing doesn't really say much, but him literally saying, I put Don through a fucking meat grinder. So, but this this woman potentially has an agenda, okay? Ex husband. Of course she does. And uh, and if if maybe she accused him prior to this, and she wouldn't say that, she's not going to be like, "What happened to Don? I bet you killed him." So maybe she said it so many times, he was like, "Yeah, I did fucking kill Don." And you say one more thing about it, I'll kill you too. Yeah, no, you're right. And and put it this way: Tiger King documentary explodes a year later or a couple months later. She's saying her ex husband killed her and getting on CB uh, CBS. Yeah, fuck this bitch. There's a lot. There's a lot to be like said to that, right? Uh, but Kenny Farr did respond to the CBS thing. Okay, he emailed them, and he denied everything. All right, here's a clip of the email. Uh, I can tell you, I have not. I have no idea why my ex-wife has come up with an outlandish lie. I cooperated with the authorities at the time of Don's disappearance, and I took a polygraph. I had absolutely nothing to do with Don's disappearance or any knowledge of. I will never trust a polygraph either way. They're inconclusive in court. Yes, I know. You have your fucking crazy CIA facial recognition crap. What's this polygraph? That stuff's from the dark ages. Well, no, I mean, it is It is a pseudoscience. It's bullshit. It's, it's bullshit to a point. There is some something to it. It's not 100% accurate, but there's something to it. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's all that fucking, it's court science, dude. It's all that shit where they, like, like the handwriting science, that's not a thing. That's, that doesn't exist. There's no actual science to that. Is that true? Is there no science to that? Yeah. Are you telling me that handwriting, you don't think handwriting analysis is a real it's science? It's not. Look it up. You can look it up. It's not. It's uh, There's a lot of things that they do in court that prosecutors will use to seem scientific, but it's because justice systems, not just America, worldwide are fucked. Yeah, fuck all science, not just American science. <laughs> I'm with I'm with RJ on this. I, I was speaking to justice systems, but no, yeah, fuck science also. 
<laughs> it's also an institution I don't care for. The world is flat. All right, let's move on. Uh, I sure, like I didn't know that about handwriting, but cool. I thought that was a real thing, but I guess not. Uh, I'll look that up after. I'm gonna fucking fact check you on that. Not because I don't trust you, because I'm interested. Apparently, okay. it's called graphology. If you want to look at the technical term. Thank you, sir. I will. Yeah, there's a lot of ologies out there that are bullshit. Like yeah, mm-hmm. cosma, crypto, zoology. Yes, or- Crypt- cryptology. Cryptozoology is a thing. It's a it's the study of uh, creatures that don't exist, like Bigfoot or uh, chupacabra. Uh, or there's also like ufology, the UFOology guys. I love those guys. They're my favorite because they they make no money and they just love finding UFOs. Anyways, next. So this also the whole story doesn't jive with the lawyer saying that he saw dawn earlier that day. Uh, the van being and the van being abandoned. Right. So. I just, I don't know how much I believe this fucking chick. Carol also refutes this saying that uh, they only had a small meat grinder at that time. You could only put one by one inch chunks of meat through it. You couldn't even, uh, it would be impossible to get a person through a meat grinder. So, uh, but Don's daughters uh, have criticized the FBI for not testing the meat grinder for DNA. So I don't know, whatever. Uh, Yeah, you could definitely throw some hands through there. For sure. You could do some, right? I just don't know. Yeah. It would be a pain, long, painstaking process to do a body, uh, a person's body through a little meat grinder. You'd have to have like a wood chipper like fucking Fargo, you know? That didn't seem to work very well either. But So I, I'm, I'm stuck on the gun thing. If all these guns were Don's guns and in his house, how did Kenny Farr get them without Carol Baskin mentioning anything about the guns? Exactly. I think it's all horseshit, really. If you want to know my truth, I think she's just making this story up to get on CBS. No, mm-hmm. I think the exact opposite. I think Carol and Kenny were in on it together and they moved the guns because I, I don't, I mean, there's a couple different theories there. They're either worried about the legality of he had too many guns. We don't want the police poking around. Or one of them was the murder weapon. They said, fuck it, just take them all. Could be. You might be right on that. I don't know. I think personally, I think it's horseshit on that one. Uh, but hey, who knows? So theory number four is uh, Don Lewis is buried under Carol Baskin's septic bed. Uh, everyone knows Joe Exotic claims Carol killed Don and fed him to her tigers. Uh, Don's kids and ex-wife also believe this, which is something. Uh, so much that after the Tiger King, Carol Baskin's 50 minutes of fame earned her a spot on Dancing with the Stars. I don't know if you guys saw that, but Carol Baskin's was on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, if you want to go laugh, she is terrible and she's out really quickly of uh, the show. She did not make it. I think she made it past the first round, but that's it. Uh, so, but she was also in Leopard Print Everything. Like, In, in case any, any producer from Dancing with the Stars ever listens this in the future, if we could instead get Carol Baskin's current husband on Dancing with the Stars, I will watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I will definitely watch mm-hmm. that too. That guy is the most awkward fucker there is. Uh, during the, the 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 reason I even bring this up is because during her episodes of uh, Dancing with the Stars, Lewis's ex wife and daughter took out ad time during the episode, and uh, they it was just a, a poster. Where could Don Lewis be? If you have any information, please let us know. So they fucking trolled her on national television. I That's fucking love it. Awesome. Did you ever <laughs> did you ever see that video of? those uh of those dudes who who staged it to make it seem like jimmy fallon was doing uh, an interview with her no she she actually answered they got like a bunch of sound clips but they they made up some fake story about how uh you know oh the the camera feed isn't working and we're gonna post this later yada you know showbiz and they got yeah. carol baskin on the line to interview her with jimmy fallon sound clips Oh my God, that's hilarious. Did they actually talk to her? Yeah, they, they did. Fu- yeah, they they posed as like his intern or PA or whatever. <laughs> I like it. I, I think it's funny, but I mean, it ruins anybody else who wants any time with her. Oh, I know. Well, unless you, you tell her that, uh, you know, she can dance in front of a camera, then apparently you can get her to do anything. Well, she, she'll do stuff for money. She's, she's a fucking, <laughs> like she had motive to kill him, right? He is a fucking millionaire and she gets all that money. She got it all, right? Mm-hmm. So- uh, in t- also in 2011, uh, Carol refused to have a polygraph taken when the police were reinvestigating Don's disappearance. I know polygraphs mean nothing, but what do you got to hide, Carol? You know, why, why won't you just take it if it means nothing? 
Because if you don't trust that shit, dude, I'd refuse a polygraph. I've refused breathalyzers. And were you drunk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you refused it. <laughs> but they didn't know that. I just told yeah. them I don't trust it. Okay, but I mean, maybe she went, I killed him, but I don't trust it. So I'm yeah. going to It's like... <laughs> Fair. All right, so... Old Fritzy, Don's lawyer, also thinks Carol knows more than she's saying. He said that multiple times. Uh, Jeff Flo, the sleazy guy from Tiger King who rolls around baby tigers in suitcases to show them off to rich people in fancy hotel rooms, says he got an anonymous letter uh, saying that it is there, the body's there, uh, but the team making Tiger King 2 won't let him show it until production's done, uh, but also filming is done now, actually, and it's uh, the letter's been handed over to the authorities. I didn't know they were doing that. They are. And it's actually about Don Lewis, most of it apparently. So, oh. which will be interesting. Yeah. Uh, Getsy thinks it's going to fa- flop. I think that's going to get uh, just as much, if not more, people eh, watching. Nah, I think, I think I'm, I'm with him. Flash in a pan. Netflix doesn't care how many people watch their episodes. They care how many people watch from first episode to last episode. And it has to be an increase from the previous season. So it's really easy to get a second season. It's really hard to get a third season. I got you. Oh, that would explain the track record of shows that come and go on there. Yeah. Yeah, And there's incredible shows that come out. And even if, let's say you had, I don't know. I don't know what the actual numbers are. Let's say you had 3 million viewers of season one. If you had 3 million viewers season two, they would cancel it. Because it didn't yeah. increase. That that tracks. That sounds like corporate bullshit. It's, super, it's so sad because I love Dirk Gently. And here we are for our four listeners, just you know, episode <laughs> after episode, really putting in work. This is work for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you do? I sat here and complained I had to come here. I'm uh, taking notes. <laughs> um, so yeah, he handed that letter off to the authority. All it says is like. I, I should have written down exactly what it said. It's like a two sentence thing saying like, I know where it is. It's under Carol's basement. Like that's just for the fucking show. That is not a real letter, but that's what I think. And oh, uh, also with the, you guys aren't thinking about this factor. They, Joe Exotic probably took a thousand interviews from prison being Joe Exotic. I can't imagine him saying like, I'm married to like five different guys in here. I'm having a great time. I just want to get out so I can see my real husband. My, my prison husbands are going to be here for me. And also Joe Exotic is currently dying. Oh right? no, really? Yeah, he's got cancer. Uh, oh, brutal. When does the mercy rule kick in and when do we let him out? Yeah, uh, I that was honestly of all the nasty things Trump did, that was the most unforgivable was stiffing Joe Exotic on a pardon. Listen, I don't care if you don't give him one, but don't tell him you're going to, to then yeah. not. That's fucked up. Yeah, this is him saying that he's dying in prison. I don't fucking know for sure, but I just looked it up again because he says, I expect to be dead by October, and this was July 2020. Uh, he's still alive, so. <laughs> he's, he's dying because he's starved for attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm dying. Joe, Joe, I am not invalidating your thought. One of four here in this podcast right now. I am here for you. <laughs> oh, this dude All fucking right. rocks. I love Joe Exotic so much. He is fucking hilarious. I've been into him since 2016, since he was on John Oliver. 2015, I guess, late 2015. Oh, really? With the presidential shit? Yeah, and I followed him, and then I saw, I kind of gave yeah. up after the presidential stuff, and I didn't know what's his name shot himself, and I didn't know, like, he had tried to hire, like, when the documentary came out, I'm like, I know about this guy, this is going to be hilarious, yeah. gay polygamy guy, this is going to be fucking awesome, I, didn't, I was like, holy fuck, this turned into, like, a murder for hire thing, this is crazier than I thought. And so, I, I don't mean to make this about, the, I know we're talking about Don Lewis, not yeah. Tiger King, but that, my favorite thing was the funeral with of his of his uh, that that dude who killed himself on yeah, an accident was... too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was his mom just high as balls like <laughs> on so many opiates you could tell and then the, and then joe exotic just taking the reins on this this boy's life away from his mother <laughs> oh god all right so here's theory number five and it's my theory i couldn't find this anywhere on the internet i'm sure it's somewhere i didn't fucking dig too deep on this but it's my theory and i think this is the one Mm -hmm. Uh, i think i think gladys killed him Ooh, he was an adultering little shit who married gladys when she was 14 years old 
cheated on her, wasted 34 years of his life to be tossed aside for that bitch Carol Baskin? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Revenge is revenge is a dish best served cold, like a packed lunch. I see what you did there. Whoever smelt it dealt it. And I saw what you did too, and I appreciate it. <laughs> But she's so harping on the – she went on, on CBS. She's gone all over the place saying, uh, Carol did it, Carol did it, Carol did it, Carol did it. I think that was her plan. Kill him and then make everyone think Carol did it because she has giant fucking tigers. Who wouldn't think this crazy big cat lady killed uh, Don Lewis to get all his money? I should have had that money. That was my fucking money. I earned that money. That fucking bitch is going to jail, and then it's my kid's money. They get all the money because they were cut out of the will. I think I'd kill him too. This fuck this guy. But that's my theory. That's what I think. This is where I think. I mm-hmm. think Gladys has everyone looking the other way while she's the actual one who fucking did it. I she heard he was leaving Don. Like she heard Carol was was or he was gonna leave uh Carol. So she went, perfect. This is my opportunity. I'm gonna go see him. There was a fucking shot happen, and then she's he's either A buried in the fucking middle of the desert somewhere. Or be under her fucking septic bed. I don't know, hmm. but I think she did it. That's my that's my theory. What do you guys yeah. think? We're okay. So we guys have all the theories. I'll just repeat them then once more time so you guys can uh, see what you guys think here. So there was the first one, which was ran away to Costa Rica to start a new life because he realized he was married to that fucking bitch Carol Baskin. Wait, wait. Before we get too far, I just want to sure. say, and I haven't been able to find it. I don't like the authorities to not tell me when they say that the keys were on the floorboard. They don't tell me which side they were on is it in driver's seat side or passenger seat because to me uh, the distinction tells me everything is it he t- shuts his car off drops the keys there because he's like fuck it i don't need this thing anymore or does he take it go to hand them to somebody and they just throw them on the floor in front of them because that means that there was a passenger there now i want to know what happened there for sure the the van the van is one of the biggest mysteries of the whole thing in my opinion is like it's first of all it's clean top to bottom all right there's no fingerprints nothing there's nothing in this van well, it's yeah he obviously probably been... bought it an hour before yeah yeah it, it, cash yeah but it's it's spanking clean so it's clearly someone cleaned it out you know even if it was bought five minutes before no one fucking professionally toothed the nail cleans a fucking van right so what are you talking about they that's literally what they do at dealerships no they don't they're lazy not not at not a cash, not someone on the side of the street with a 1988 ca- Dodge Caravan. Are you kidding me? I mean, okay, so were there zero fingerprints in it? Is that what we're saying? No, not there was it was no evidence in there at all, like nothing. So that's a red herring. <laughs> I want to know what, what did Kenny Farr do prior to working with Don Lewis? Was he a criminal? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I know he worked for him for a long time. I can... All right, I love how all of the people who were on the tiger king documentary have an imdb page <laughs> that's awesome because they're just normal fucking people who are like eh i looked up kenny Farr just to see if there's anything before his before life now there's fuck all hmm. let's uh let's get my theory out of the way since it'll be right and everyone will agree um yep yeah so don lewis okay uh you know shady dealings and all that and then planes. Okay, planes. What I think when I think planes, I think Amelia Earhart. All right. So oh. Don, all right, fell in love with Amelia Earhart. Okay. And and in order to, to stop having to make her lunches, Carol agreed to help make Don disappear. All right. It was a one-to-one trade. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I don't I don't really know where Kenny fits into all this, but he probably helped too. And then now Don, he flew his plane. Eventually, he hit some wires on the way, but he found where Amelia Earhart was, and he's just living with her. And they have like a little plane uh, sanctuary where they rehabilitate little planes and everything. And <laughs> they ride around on the two ocelots he was missing from his property. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Well, the ocelots are the new Costa Rican military. So <laughs> there you go. I yeah. I forgot. Way to tie it all together, RJ. Uh, from now on, I'm going to ask you what your insane theory is every time. So, oh, good. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's insane, but sure. As long as you like it, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I forgot that you did the same thing with Amelia. You did an insane theory at the end too. That's perfect. Uh, I like it. So I, I'm, I'm going to say that it was a two person team. Kenny Farr, Carol Baskin worked together to kill Don Lewis. Um, I, I remember something from, 
the Tiger King show, and I, I can't pinpoint it exactly, but there was something with like she definitely owned a gun when she threatened him, and that's why he was worried. But what's weird to me is that it never came back up later. And I never heard during the documentary that he just had a fucking van full of guns and brought them home. So to me, it sounds like he was a co-conspirator and somehow just got away with like, yeah, I'm just going to move this dude's guns and no one's going to say shit. I actually, I think the wife might be embellishing a little bit. I don't think he said that he killed Don, but saying like, here's the thing, like Kenny Farr works for Don, right? All of a sudden, Carol kills Kenny or kills Don, calls Kenny to come over and says, listen, Don's dead now. And Kenny's thinking, all right, the only way that I still have any attachment to all the money attached to this place is by helping Carol. And I think Kenny was all about the money the same way Don was all about the money and was like, fuck it. I'll move these guns. Yeah. You want to feed them to your tigers? Sweet. We'll just tell people we put them in the grinder. We'll start that shit up. So when they go test that DNA, we can be like, ah, fuck you. I think that, I think they were trying to put out some fake news. Okay. That's my theory. Right. it's it's a it's it's touched upon on the internet that carol actually helped kenny Farr, uh, and that's why she she claims that he is such like a son figure and he was the most well-respected one uh on the place and she was the only one he trusted uh that's a big hint too honestly that uh, he's the only one that she trusted and i want to believe that uh carol did it too because it's the funnest theory it's joe exotics theory uh i i want to believe that side and i you can sway me that way probably uh, the Gladys thing's just fun. I think that's a, a practical, true crime reality of what would probably happen in a real people. But these aren't real people. These are fucking, this is fucking Carol Baskin. This Did is anyone check to see if Joe actually has cancer? Because if this guy just so happened to be like, I feel like I have cancer and he has it, we got to listen to him on the Carol Baskin shit. It's all I'm saying. I concur on that. I actually, I don't even need proof. I just think we should listen to him. That music video where he shoots the fucking AK in the water to like targets ever or whatever is the most, one of the most Incredible. crazy things I've ever seen. So yes, I would listen to him too, because he's going to fuck me up uh, if I don't. Where was he from again? Al- uh, what is it? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. It Oklahoma? Yeah. Oklahoma, yeah. yeah. Um, is that near Florida? No. Like, is that? No? No, it's, well, I mean, it's South, but it's, you know, I mean, it's probably as close to Florida as I am. Huh. Well, maybe closer, but yeah, because it's a small circle, this big cat circle. So they must have known each other through that kind of stuff. It's weird. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna probably one one more sub theory. Uh Jeff Lowe okay. has uh Don Lewis in a suitcase and brings him to hotel rooms in Vegas and shows him to people <laughs> for money. <laughs> that guy's good. That guy's uh uh it wouldn't put a pat I wouldn't put it past him. He's also he's a lot like Don Lewis with the young women too, eh? Him? Yeah, he's the he's the truly like more than anybody on that documentary. Jeff Lowe is the most evil person. He's an opportunist and he's a fucking idiot to boot, but somehow just keeps tripping into lucky gets. Um, so I just read an article the other day. It was two days ago that um, sixty eight of the cats were seized from uh, Jeff Lowe's yeah, park. That was awesome. Fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy for sure. With the just bringing the, just that suitcase bringing the kitty cats up to hotel rooms is fucked up to begin with. I don't even get the rest of it is more fucked up. Don't get me wrong, but just starting there, I'd be like, fuck that guy. And then all the other shit. Oh, this podcast is not cool with big cats and suitcases. Well, in (laughs) (laughs) big pussy and suitcases, yes. (laughs) Got it. Got it. Sorry. Got it. Would you? Would you do that? Would you hire someone to bring you a little a, a? baby kitty fucking tiger and pay someone to just wheel it up in a suitcase would you do that no like, i don't want a baby that- i want like i want like a full-grown cougar doing some like aerobics inside of this thing <laughs> just like sprawl out and then like i want this thing to talk to me and be like ready to spend the night in my cabin <laughs> well guess what wait cougar like woman or yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, I was <laughs> I was touching on that one. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even think of that. Maybe that's what Carol and uh, uh, Don meant on Wildlife on Easy Street. You could sleep with a cougar for the night for seventy five dollars. On Easy Street, <laughs> they ran a brothel. <laughs> yeah, so that actually, okay, okay. Let's just be serious for a couple seconds. Wildlife just... on Easy Street. Holy shit! You just cracked the case. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. They I, were now... flying. They were flying prostitutes up from Costa Rica. <laughs> exactly mm. this is where i was going with this you just you just made me figure it out so 
this is what they were doing the whole time. And this is the theory I think you guys are both going to go with. So they were, they had a brothel. The, the, the cat thing is just a fucking, uh, it's like a shine on the side to get everyone looking at the big cats. But in reality, there was prostitutes being flown up once every couple weeks from Costa Rica, living in those little cabins. And uh, the thing, Carol Baskins, like Gladys, found out that Don was fucking all these girls, all these uh, prostitutes under his thing. And she got started to get jealous. She's like, the only big pussy you fuck is me, Don. You don't fuck the, uh, the little pussy from Costa Rica. That's fine. So her, she started an affair with Kenny Farr. Kenny Farr and her contributed to each other's uh, madness by saying, let's kill off Don, take over this prostitution business. We know how to get rid of him. We know he's got a plane. I can take all his guns. We can get rid of those. We'll take care of him. He's probably been fed to the tigers now i'm gonna go with that they don't mind because they fed someone to a tiger they don't mind going to clean up all the bones that the tigers would have left put them through the meat grinder the hookers are still probably kicking it on easy street they don't call it easy street anymore though it's big cat rescue but they still have the cabins so kenny far and her are fucking pimps and they took out mm. their competition because don was dipping into his you don't fuck your own uh, you don't you don't fuck your own product or whatever you don't uh, what is the what's the saying with drugs you don't use your own shit what are, you don't sample your own product yeah yeah whatever so that's yeah. what she you don't you don't about. fuck your own whores and since she <laughs> that's yeah the and since, common yeah, saying yeah and since she was the the brains of his like real estate outfit she said look at all the profits we're losing because you're taking up all these girls time stop it and she was into the money I, I like this theory she actually killed him I'm down now fuck Gladys has no idea she's just trying to find him. She's just trying to keep up making lunches for all these prostitutes. In 2019, <laughs> Big Cat Rescue's um, net assets were over $13 million. That's... You don't get that from showing people animals. I'll tell you fucking that. And what's funny is Carol Baskin officially only takes $65,000 in salary. Her husband, Howard, who is the secretary Take seventy three thousand, so he takes more. She's definitely funneling money somewhere. It's the yeah. whores from Costa Rica. Like this is so obvious. I didn't even like. Wow, we actually solved it. I think for real. What are, you, are you guys all in agreement with that? Should we tell Tally that? Yeah, I don't know what you're gonna tell her. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> well, how, how, how do you summarize yeah. this? I, you know, it's gonna be weird because Tally's not gonna understand when you start bringing up Amelia Earhart. But I'm all for it. Somehow, I feel like she'll just be like, "Cool, good job." No, <laughs> she, that's what I think if I explained it in perfect crisp fucking English with the perfect, she'd still be like, I don't get it, but cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But this is this is what I'm going to tell her. I'm going to say Carol Baskin killed her with Kenny Farr so they can continue their uh, brothel business that no one knows about, but they're going to find out in Tiger King 2. So everyone should, who listens to this episode should watch Tiger King 2 because I assume uh, that there's going to be the brothel is going to be exposed. And then if we get everyone thinking there's a brothel, because there is one, we can get a season three where we get Joe Exotic out of jail. This is all the plan. And and I think we're getting ad revenue from Netflix. Okay, I'm not I'm not even I'm not even fucking with you here. So because because Big Cat Rescue is a nonprofit, right? They have to publicly share their earnings every year. Yeah. So they have through 2014 on all of their contributions, educational tours, yada yada, and the change in net assets in 2014. Their change in net assets was a million. And then 2015, it was like less than a million. Same in 2016. Nowhere does it wildly jump up like 10 million, 13. Where the fuck is all this money coming from? Yeah, I, I, it's the, it's the, it's uh, senoritas, the, the big cougars, the cougars that sleep yeah. in here. Actually, it's older women. This is great. It's cougars that he's bringing up. Ah, uh, the- yeah. So it's all been code speak, sort of like, Ex- sort of like cheese pizza for the the kids that are definitely in those basements in those pizza places what, what year did don die uh, uh he didn't officially have a die, day die, but he disappeared in 1997 in 1997 they had a 368 percent increase in number of visitors in 1998 they had a 957 percent increase in visitors that to me sounds like funneling money yeah because they're probably not real visitors it was all just Cooked books. It's all just pump the numbers and launder our money through because we don't have Don's bank account. Yeah, Don's alive as fuck. He's eighty some years old, uh, maybe. How do you go? How do, how do you go from eighty five visitors in nineteen ninety six to four hundred visitors in nineteen ninety seven to four thousand plus visitors in nineteen ninety eight? 
How do you go from fucking children to fucking Amelia Earhart? These are questions we'll never fully answer. By the right? year 2000, they had 10,000 visitors. You know what? I, and you could hide getting these uh, these prostitutes in by just saying, like, I have two leopards and a cougar back there in cages, and then throw her in a fucking cage beside the two leopards you actually have. And then when the border guy looks, they go, oh, there's a there's cats. Okay, bye. You know? <laughs> he just mistakes <laughs> a Costa Rican woman for a big cat. No, no, he's not looking at all of them. He just looks at the one oh, on the end and right. goes, oh, there's a bunch of cats here. Fuck it. And then goes. <laughs> yeah, Costa Rican women look very feline-ish. <laughs> all right, the IRS, you guys need to do a double check on Big Cat Rescue. Something ain't right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, we, we solved it. We know what happened. They get prostitutes and Don Lewis is either A, dead, and Carol's running the fucking business now, or B, he's alive running the fucking... The whores down in Costa Rica up to his fucking uh, buddy Kenny Farr up in uh, up in the old America. Yeah. So I like it. I like that theory. And we're going to we solved it. No, I'm just reading through all of their IRS forms. <laughs> and what's really weird is one year they decided to black out Carol Baskin's signature. No, and I'm just doing an unreasonable amount of research for this thing that's about to end. <laughs> oh, the, the numbers went up. <laughs> because the Dateline episode came out just before it happened, dum dum. <laughs> and I love how right you are all the time. I know it's it's, it's the, the voice of my yeah. head. <laughs> you just running horse. <laughs> I actually think that might have been what was going on. That makes perfect sense. I think it was drugs, guns, and horse. Yeah, it could be. It's a- okay. Actually, sex trafficking—that's victim blaming. They probably didn't have a choice. No, it was it was entirely their fault. They forced his hand. If you were if you were trafficked into sex slavery, you should have thought about that before. <laughs> you should you, you should have went to college. How come you didn't go to college? Ooh, somebody stole me. Ooh. Everyone's got a story. <laughs> Ooh, boo-hoo. They cornered me in a shopping mall and my parents were separated from me. Yeah, sure. Oh, you couldn't have just run away, you pussy. There's a point when the victim becomes the you're the old problem. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. Yeah. You could have run. You're a child, not paralyzed. Come on. <laughs> My mom told me that every day. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom was trying to give you to Don Lewis. And like, nah, we don't want him. He's got stupid <laughs> hair. <laughs> Carol's putting a tail and ears on him. Just like, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs>